Today we're going to be looking at some people he messed around and found out. Lady gets angry because she didn't want to get wet while she was sitting in the wet zone. Oh, is she from water bath? Oh my god, splash her. Just pour it over her head. Oh, there you go. Honestly, just pour the bucket on her, just completely soak her. <laughs> That's one of them water parks, isn't it, with all like the animals and the seals? Did she get one of the seals completely soak her, like actually drench her? Oh! <laughs> Is that her husband beside her? If I am correct, her husband was sat beside her. I'm pretty sure her husband's laughing at her. But whenever it comes to situations like that, you can't fight with stupid. What was she expecting? I'll throw water back at him as if the guy working in the wet zone cares, lol. Exactly, like the whole point of being in the wet zone is to get wet. And then yet again, she thought she was smart by throwing her water bottle over him. And then he just sprays her with the hose. She seemed a bit hot-headed, so maybe it'll cool her down. Wonder if she goes to a concert and asks him to turn it down while standing next to the speaker. That's probably something she'd do, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. I don't understand why she thought pouring her water over him would be a good idea. Do you not realise what his job is? I'm in an a-hole for kicking my GF out while she recovers from surgery. I'm male 27, I've been with my GF 25 for three and a half-ish years. We have a great relationship except for when it comes to money. She's terrible with my money, is very impulsive when it comes to spending. Honestly, money can completely ruin relationships. It can ruin relationships, families and friendships. Trust me, I've lost friends because of money. I had friends that were so used to me paying for lunch and dinner whenever I didn't, they had an issue with it and basically ended the friendship. The entitlement in these people is real. A year ago, I sat down with her and discuss her finances and hers was crap to say the least. I told her I'd help her get out of the hole she was in if she was willing to sacrifice and do the work. We made a plan and agreed if she could reduce her spend by a certain amount for three months in a row she could move in with me at my townhouse and get out of her 4500 a month lease to save up and pay off her credit card debts. What type of apartment is she in that costs 4500 a month? Is that like a luxury one? Is she living in like the middle of LA? She did it and moved in with me. We agreed that with the $4,500 she'd put 2 k towards debt and 2500 would go to savings account. She'd done that for the last nine months and it's almost done paying off her debts. Okay, so apparently she's doing a pretty good job. Yet again, I want to know why she is spending 4500 on an apartment. And apparently she's got crippling credit card debt. That is why I don't want to get a credit card. I know a lot of people who have a credit card and sort of forget that credit cards is actual money. Even though you're swiping it and it doesn't feel like real money, then payments eventually add up. She should now have about 20 k in her savings. Three weeks ago she left with her cousin to visit family. When she came back, she had gotten a Brazilian butt lift on. She spent nearly all her savings. Thing. So yeah, that money that she was saving wasn't actually being saved for her or her future, it was being saved for her BBL. I was furious over it and told her to pack up her crap and leave my place. She's since gone and has been blowing up my phone since she could have discussed it with me first and I'll love it when it's fully healed and all kinds of stuff. She knows I wouldn't support her doing it, let alone spend that money on it. The thing is with BBLs, they only look good on Instagram, they don't actually look good in real life. Trust me, I've seen BBLs and they do not look natural. There is such things as a natural BBL, but like it still doesn't look natural because BBL just isn't meant to be natural. She had to take time off work to recover and had to go straight back using her credit card. She says if I don't forgive her and take her back, she'll be forced to where she was financially a year ago. I told her it's none of my business. Am I reacting and being an a-hole? No, why would you put it this way? You literally put her in such a good position. She moved in with you. She cleared her credit card debt, had 20k in her savings account, and she spent it on a botched BBL. So why would you and why should you feel guilty for kicking her out? Like it's what she deserves. She spent 20k in a butt job and is saying you kicking her out is why she'll be back to her own spending habits. Yeah, okay. Some people just can't break their old habits, you know, they'll change for a while and then go back to it. And she is proud. And then yet again, it's the fact that she spent her savings on a BBL, which probably doesn't even look good. If I'd told you about my terrible plan, which only is enormous downsides and which are completely contrary to what we'd previously agreed, you would have told me not to do it. That's why I never told you about my terrible plan before I went ahead and did it anyways. Is that our argument? Because if it is, it does seem like a terrible argument, not the a-hole. If I were you, I would just end your relationship with her. She's a mess. That's the only way to put it. You know, you can't be dating people like that. If you 
do it, someone who is a mess, you eventually will turn into that mess or you will just get stressed out. Everyone else in that Reddit seemed to agree with me, you know, no one really has any sympathy for her. Tells a potential employee to find another job if they don't like his terms is shocked when she agrees to do just that. Sat for a horrible job interview for an hour, then the guy was like, by the way, this only pays 30k, so if you're looking for a job that pays better, look elsewhere. So I said, okay, I will, then he was like, question mark, wait, no. Alameo, this was hours ago and I still feel incredible. Well, I mean, he did say to you, go find another job, and I guess that's exactly what you've done. And you probably find a better paying one. I've never understood this logic. Why would you want employees not to want to be incentivized by the money? That's the whole point. They know that you're not getting paid a lot, but they want you to do loads of work. Like, it doesn't make much sense. Has anyone else also seen them job applications where, like, it doesn't actually tell you how much you're getting paid? Never apply to them. Like, never ever apply to a job that doesn't tell you how much you're getting paid. And also, if you are thinking about applying to a job and it doesn't feel like you're getting a good amount of money for it, don't apply. I seen a job recently. It was, like, a care home job where you basically take care of the elderly. You get paid, like, 10 50 or, like, 11 pounds an hour. Mind people in Tesco's get paid 12 pounds. Isn't it crazy to think people stacking shelves in Tesco's get paid more than a carer? Like, that is insane. I was told something similar. Basically, I saw a post online for beginner positions that were paying about 10k more than what I was getting paid. I brought it up in a manager meeting and I was told to find something else if I was so unhappy. I took their advice and found a much better paying job. I ended up closing the shop and moved to a different state. I consider myself very lucky. I mean, that's just karma. They were like, if you're not happy, leave. So you weren't happy, you left, and then their shop shut down. Which means they probably lost their jobs as well. I feel like some jobs are really broken, just like the way management is. You would think management would want everything to go as smoothly as possible. It feels like they want the opposite. Karnataka tourists defy ban and bathing in waterfall. Cops fuck off with their clothes. I mean, you can't really blame the place, can you? Like, they were told not to do it and they done it. So they could be walking around naked. Oh, and I'm gonna have to blur it out. I mean, put it this way, rules are put into place for specific reasons, and yes, sometimes rules are made to be broken, but not them rules. Sometimes I wish every police officer in this globe could do what the Indian police can do. This is definitely one of the things. Mind you, not everything, but the non-violent stuff like taking away clothes are so much better than a fine. This would be remembered forever. They put the clothes in the police car, so if they wanted to, they could just zoom off. And then were they going to do walk around in their panties? I'm an a-hole for not allowing my ex-fiance to continue living with me after she broke off our engagement. I'm sorry, what? I'm an a-hole for not allowing my ex-fiance to continue you live with me after she broke off our engagement. So your ex-fiance broke off your engagement and she's still wanting to live with you. I'm gonna start this off with a big fat no. My ex-fiance broke up with me because she felt that we barely seen each other, which is a lie. I work in a family restaurant. By the time my fiance gets off work, I wouldn't make it home to three to five hours after her, depending on the day. She's been wanting me to find a new job because she felt it wasn't fair she worked longer hours than I did. And since I worked in the evening, she didn't feel like we had enough time together. I always told her that I had no desire to quit. And I think it'll be beneficial for us if she were to work with me because we get more time off when we get to spend it together. She told me she didn't feel comfortable working for my parents and I accepted that. She'd still complain from time to time but I never thought she'd break up with me for it. Well she did and she said my work schedule was the reason. This upset me deeply because I didn't understand. I don't work Sundays or Mondays and I get to spend time with her on Tuesday mornings and Saturday mornings before I go to work. I thought we were passive but I was wrong. Okay so it's not like you're working 24-7 like you actually do spend time with her. When she broke up with me I was hurt. She was apologizing but told me that with our work schedule she didn't see how we could get married if I wasn't going to try and find a job that was better for all of us. She said it would be better if we just stayed friends. I told her she knew before we got engaged what my schedule was and she shouldn't have accepted it in the first place. She told me that she accepted it because she thought that over time I would try and find a different job. That reminds me of an article I read about Ariana Grande recently. Ariana Grande has like a new partner but before that she was actually married to a guy called Delton I'm pretty sure. And apparently one of the big reasons as to why they split was because he didn't like the fact that she was so famous and everyone knew who she was. But it's like why did you date her and why did you marry her? It's Ariana Grande. I just think that's very 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 similar. She knew what his work schedule was like and wasn't happy with it but still decided to get engaged to him. Like I don't think he's gonna change his job just to make you happy. After our breakup I avoided her after that because I really didn't want to see her anymore. But then I felt that I shouldn't have to be the one uncomfortable in my own home. It's not big enough to avoid her completely and I felt like she needed to move out. I told her that I felt that she needed to go and since we aren't getting married anymore there was no point in us living together. She asked me if I was serious and I told her I was. I asked for the ring back as well. She got upset by this because she said that I gave it to her and I shouldn't ask for it back since it meant something. 
than her. Yeah, maybe months ago, but like you're not getting engaged anymore, so why would you need that ring? And then yet again, why are you still living together? Like obviously I understand if they're engaged to live together. You're not engaged anymore, so surely you should go your separate ways. Wouldn't that be so awkward living in the same house as your ex? Like you're constantly reminded about each other, but you're not in that relationship. I told her that I bought it so we could get married, but since we weren't getting married, I wanted it back. She told me I could easily afford to get a new one and that I was greedy. She said that trying to kick her out and ask her for a ring back after we'd been together for so long was insensitive. And I should be ashamed of myself. I didn't budge and she ultimately gave me the ring back and moved out nine days ago. Okay, so that's good. You know, you stood your ground and finally she left. You probably should have done that a lot more throughout the relationship. But then yet again, how's she gonna call you greedy when she's the one who's living in your home after you've broken up and wants to keep the ring? Somebody in this situation is greedy and it ain't you. But she told me that if I truly loved her, I wouldn't have asked for the ring back and would have allowed her to continue living with me. She said that she had a legitimate reason to call off her engagement and shouldn't be made homeless because of it. She said that it was her home too since she lived there with me and she shouldn't have to live with her parents. Who's the one who actually owns a house though? Like whose name is it in? Even though she might live there and might live there for a while, it's not her home. Now if she's actually helped pay for it, it's a completely different situation. However, if she's never had to pay for the home, it's not hers. She doesn't have any right to live there. I don't fault her for calling off our engagement. I just wish she would have told me sooner. What I have a problem with is the fact that she still has to live with me and gets to keep the ring that I bought. Okay, and now he's gonna tell us the work schedule. I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 4.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. On Fridays, I work from 4 to 10, and Saturday, I work from 4 to 11. The restaurant's only open during the evening. She works 7.30s to 6, and she's off Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Okay, so your work schedule literally isn't that bad. What are you doing, like, six, seven, five-hour shifts? Why is she so annoyed about that? I'd also like to add that she's not a bad person. We were very good friends before we started dating, and this has definitely ruined our friendship. But I still think she's a good person who was just hurt by the situation. I didn't have to force her out. She moved out on her own. I received two messages about her and they weren't kind. I'm not sure what other people think, but I'm just trying to clear something up for her because I don't want other people to assume the worst. I mean, honestly, I think we've already assumed the worst by the sounds of it, this woman is entitled. I just don't understand why she's ending that engagement. Like, you work less than her, you spend time with her, but she still wants you to change your life to help her. That's not the way the world works. Not the a-hole. What the hell did she think was gonna happen? That's what I'm thinking. Like, look, I can understand maybe you're not happy in the relationship. Thinking that you can still live there and keep the ring. Like, that's next level delusional. Not the a-hole. Engagement rings are given an exception of marriage. No marriage, no ring. She can't really expect that breaking up with you but still living together was ever gonna work. She just wanted you to be the one to make her leave so she can justify to yourself and probably family and friends what meanie you are, not the a-hole. Honestly, like, it just feels like she wants to have something to use against you. She's the one who initiated the split. Now she's trying whatever she can to make you look like the bad guy. And the only bad guy is her. Again. This kick streamer is known for his constantly racist remarks oh, in the stream. Oh, yeah, I know him. Because you niggas don't know how to behave. He's been in Japan for a while now, and he's been throwing around words like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Pearl Harbor constantly. There was already some confrontations in Japan, in fact, but apparently the word is getting out because the Japanese seem to be fighting back. Good. He can't even walk down the street anymore without getting a little beating. Good. If I go back and... Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? They pulled up on me with three cars, bro. Good. Unmarked. It's what you deserve. Whoa, 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 whoa. Only yesterday, someone choke held him on the street. I mean, visit a foreign yeah. island, insult all the natives live for weeks, and see what happens. We won't mention his name. Whoever wants to find him will find him. I think we've seen him in a few of my past videos, and honestly, he deserves everything that happens to him. If I am correct, isn't he the one who actually went to jail? Like, I'm pretty sure he got arrested and spent time in jail. Dude's a real piece of crap. I have zero sympathy for him. I don't think anyone has sympathy for someone like him. I mean, put it this way. If you travel to a country and then disrespect them, you're going to get everything that you deserve. In his case, a beating. Why move to a country and then treat those citizens like that? That's what I'm saying. How can you move to a country and go about your life terrorizing them? It just doesn't make any sense. And then yet again, I feel like he thinks that it's America. You know, in America, you have a a lot of rights, too many rights in my opinion. You know, you're not in America, you're in Asia. You should do that in a Middle Eastern country, go to Iran and do that. That's a challenge I'm gonna set for you. Well, anyways, guys, just really fat to do there. That is some people who messed around and found out. If you want to see me look at more people who face the consequences of their actions, let me know if you will. Chris Pegger, subscribe and see you all tomorrow for another video.